And now just one minute to go. Soyuz now on internal power. We may see just a minute or so of uh, in-cabin views, but then we'll switch to external views of the Soyuz during today's flight. Vehicle to internal power. First umbilical tower there uh, separating from the booster. Thirty seconds now until launch. Crown umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected, and in just a moment, the second umbilical tower will separate. Power on board. There's the second tower. Command for ignition, oxygen. Launch command has been issued. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Engine turbo pump at flight speed. Engines at maximum thrust. Lift off. And there is lift off of the Soyuz MS-10 to the International Space Station, carrying Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin to the orbital complex. This again is Nick Haig's first time to uh, launch to space, and Alexei Ovchinin's second. Good on board, and we are feeling well. Copy. Hearing good first stage performance for the Soyuz, delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. In the first stage, the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. Sixty seconds into the flight. The pressure in the chamber is nominal. Block one, copy. Uh, everything is well on board. They're feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Everything proceeding as a. Uh Intended for today's flight, now just a little over a minute into it, the velocity of the Soyuz is about 1,100 miles per hour. View here of the crew inside the Soyuz, now making their way to the International Space Station. Nick Haig there at the top of the screen and Alexei Ochinin at the bottom. This is Burlap 1. Copy. Everything is well on board. The crew is feeling well. Copy. View here of the Soyuz making its way into space. Everything looking good, proceeding nominally. Inaudible. And we have the escape tower for the Soyuz now jettisoned. Everything continuing nominally. Four strap-on boosters have been jettisoned, and they've completed their job, dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Soyuz traveling about 3,350 uh, 3, miles an hour. Is it emergency of booster 2 minutes 45 seconds, the uh, emergency, the failure of the booster? Failure of the booster? Yes, BS. BS, yes, BS. Separation? Enable power? Back. 190 seconds into the flight, so he's traveling in, in about 4,700 miles uh, per hour. Don't be in a hurry. Burlaki, copy. We are in uh, weightlessness, you know, according to our sensations. Stand by. Burlaki, do we have F1 illuminated? 
11.42.17. Failure. 11.42.17 is the time of the failure. F1 on F is illuminated. Copy. Okay, the shroud is separated. The crew is feeling well. Everything is well on board. We have crew uh, in our hands, and the power is on. Copy. So what are the recommendations of the ground? What about the separation? Did the separation go through? Yes, it did. 11.42.55. For like did you deactivate root power? No, uh, did you activate the root power? Yes, the root power is on. on. Now, please send the S command. Ballistic uh, descent command is sent from root controller. Copy. 11.45.30. The S has been sent. We have the indicator illuminated. The overload has started. Yes, we are getting ready for the G load. Time 12.46, below the 6.7. Copy. We feeling rotation. The G load is going down. 18.46.20, G load is 2.72 and going down. Copy, Burlakim. So tighten the straps in work. Hearing there that uh, there has been uh, an issue with the booster, and we're standing by for information as we continue to get it from the Russian flight control team. But everything seems to be fine with the crew. We had good calm with them, and they are okay. We continue to wait for more information. That again was a replay of today's launch at 3.40 a.m. Central Time. Shortly uh, after that launch, uh, we heard from Roscosmos that there was an issue with a booster that caused uh, the launch to be aborted and then the crew to go through it. Go through a ballistic mode landing. Uh, this is a statement from NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who was at today's launch it's on his Twitter account, which is at Jim Bridenstine. It says uh, NASA astronaut Nick Hague and Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin are in good condition following today's aborted launch. I'm grateful that everyone is safe. A thorough investigation into the cause of the incident will be conducted. And you can see a full statement there at his Twitter account as well. With with additional words. Once again, we did get reports from Roscosmos now that the crew has made it via helicopter to Jessica's gun where they're undergoing a few uh, medical tests before they continue their trip on to Baikonur. NASA plane is standing by to take Nick Haig to uh, Baikonur. And here is a photo uh, from Roscosmos of Nick Haig at the Jessica Scott Airport and his crewmate Alexei Ovchinin. Again, all reports are that the crew is doing well. Good to see photos of them there. And we will continue giving you uh, additional information as we receive it. The International Space Station crew members had been ready to uh, greet uh, Haig and Ochinen when they arrived later today, uh, but uh, they have been informed of the situation with the with the Soyuz and that their 
crewmates are safe here on the ground. Uh, we have a conversation between the crew and uh, space station Capcom here, uh, Andy Mogensen, who, uh, which, will, which will replay for you here now. Station Moscow Space to Ground 1 for Sergey. Go ahead. Hey, Sergey, the boys have landed. Search and rescue folks are talking to them, and they contacted the search and rescue ops, and they told them that they're doing great. All the uh, ground-based and uh, air-based assets are uh, currently being deployed and uh, on their way to the landing site. Where they landed? South of Jeskazgan, approximately. Karajal is the nearest uh, town, Karajal. That's uh, everything I know for now, but I'll keep you posted. All right, thank you. Uh, were the G-forces uh, all the way up? About six and seven, six decimal seven. All right, I guess they didn't uh, accelerate enough before they started uh, uh, coming back. That again was a conversation earlier this morning with the International Space Station crew. Since that conversation, the crew has been, again, uh, retrieved from uh, the landing site east of Jessica's Gone, and uh, they are now at the Jessica's Gone Air Airport, uh, undergoing a few medical tests before they make their way back to Baikonur.